When we created our form, we created some actions that went along with it. A series of steps that would be triggered by a click. Now we can place buttons anywhere in our UI and they can trigger an action. And the action sets can be related to data. They can be related to the whole application, to a particular form, or we can have some conditional logic that we can build up. So let's add an action to our appointments table that's going to download all of our data. So we'll add a new button. We'll move it up one, sort of knock it in the way. And this is going to be export data. So I click the button, define actions, and I want to export data. So which table do I want to export? The appointments table. How do I want to export it? A CSV. And which columns? Well, data, date, and reason. I'll save that. I'll publish. And if I try to use that over here, I'll get an error that says, please select at least one row. The buttons associated with the table, and we need to select rows within our table for our export. I'll go back over here. I'll click on my table, and I'll click on allow row selection. Publish again. Refresh the page. And now I've also got these check marks along the side. So I can now either check these messages, export the data, and I've got a CSV file describing those three events. So actions and buttons can be used to be able to export data. They can be used to submit forms and validate forms, to delete rows. They can be used to update state. They can be used to trigger automations. There's so many things that you could use these for. And you can stack them one on top of the other, as we've seen before when we created our form. So our form button here had four actions, validating the data, saving the row, clearing the form, and then changing the form step. Actions allow us to carry out different tasks within our application with very little configuration.